What's up, everyone? It's the Bag Skate here with Nico, me from the TO, and Big Blonde Bear in Melisco, Matt. Big Blonde Bear in Melisco. Um, cool, so we're the Bag Skate. We're back again. Uh, last time we did our top, uh, we did our top right wingers, top 15 right wingers for the season. We are now back at it. We're going to be doing the top left wings this time. We might go a little bit more in depth, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so last time you did 20. So how many did you do this time? Uh, 25. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what did you get? All right. No, actually, that, that is fine. What did you do for 25? I only did 15. So I'll, oh. I'll, we'll debate <laughs> since we got 25. Yeah. We'll, I, all right. We'll I jump mean, right into it. So this is all top left wings of the whole league, and it's all on paper. <laughs> we got it here. I um, I started off with, I guess, some honorable mentions slash... We'll save those later. We'll save those for later until yeah. we get to, like, the top, like, five, and then we'll say honorable mentions. Yeah. I so. mean, they're they're not, like, like top wingers anymore. These are, like, my, my bottom 25. But, so we don't, we don't even have to talk about no, them. No, let's do it. We're doing all 25. We, got, we have lots of time, so let's do it. What all do right. we got? All right. So do you want me to start directly at the bottom? Start it from the bottom. <laughs> all right. In no particular order for 25 through 20, but I have JT Miller. Okay. Who maybe should have been higher, but I don't know. You no, know what? So JT Miller played for, uh, played for the Rangers and Lightning. So he went from the Rangers. I think he only had maybe, when how many points did he have for the Rangers? Maybe like, forty points, and then went with the Lightning. Had twenty and twenty, right? Yeah, Around something there. like that. Yeah, yeah. So he came on. He went. He ended up playing a, a pretty not vital role with with Tampa Bay, but I mean they they ended up getting eliminated what in the final in the conference finals anyway so uh not really a big addition all right who do you get for 24 um james van reams like <laughs> okay i mean i don't I, again like 24 <laughs> really you, why what would all you right we'll talk him? about do, him do you talk, have him higher <laughs> we'll talk about that later what's the next one what do you got for 23 i mean he only had 54 oh points what do we got was 23 <laughs> we'll talk about that later <laughs> um these next two I just kind of threw in here just as maybe some topics for discussion. Um, they were both injured for parts of last year, but um, Max Pacioretty and Zach Parise. I, I was looking at some of Parise's advanced stats, like Corsi and all that. He was horrible. He's been injured. He's he's had a rough time of it, so I don't. I give him a pass. How many points did Max Pacioretty have? Pacioretty hit 37. 37 points? Yeah. Really? Yep. He had 37. How many? How many games? 37 points in 64 games. Holy Mackinac! Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, but at the same time, who's nobody in Montreal can pass the puck to begin with. So he has no center. Who is the top line center? Philip Deneau in in Montreal. So good lord. He was injured. Yes, he was injured. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, there's nobody passing the puck. I think Gallagher had 54 points and he played the whole season. So yeah. Like that, that, nobody's passing the puck in Montreal. So I mean, he did have an off season, yes, but at the same time, I don't really blame him. He's a winger who scores goals. He needs someone to help him pass. Yeah, I mean, he's a shooter. He's not the playmaker. <laughs> exactly. So, so I don't blame that. Every other season, he he's had thirty. Yeah, and that's thirty goals. <laughs> so or thirty seven goals in general. So I don't get that off seasons happen, but now Montreal is kind of a weird a weird hole to talk about. But anyway, who'd you have for the next one? Uh, Nikolai Ehlers. You had him all the way down there. Yeah, I guess I kind of overlooked him. Whoa. Okay, we'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, next. <laughs> Vander Kane. Vander Kane. Okay, I see. He had 54 points, right? 54. He, he yes, 54 points, 29 goals, 25 assists. Played um, much better. I should, I guess, I should say more inspired hockey since the trade to San Jose and. Um, it just seemed like a really good fit there. That trade really jump-started the Sharks. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But, you know, Kane's a, a guy who's he's bounced around the league, hasn't quite found a permanent home yet. Maybe you it's know, San Jose. I don't want to say that. No, I, that's a bad thing. Because when we say bounced around the league, we make it seem like he's been on, like, 40 different teams. The guy's been on two teams. He was on. Well, he was the on. Thrashers, Jets. Yeah, but Thrashers. Sabres. But the Thrashers and the Jets are the same yeah, thing. Yeah, same, same, same. He, he was yeah, pulled good over. So good point. And I mean, um, he played there for how many seasons? What five seasons? And played for Buffalo for the last three. So it's not like he's been on been on like twenty different teams. He's been on two, and he had he didn't have any issues in Buffalo. I that this guy's had a bad connotation since Winnipeg. Yeah, he, he's got a bad rap. Yeah, but it's just been in Winnipeg though. That's the thing. 
Buffalo, he's had no issues. Nobody has said anything about him in Buffalo. People just like to make up things about him. <laughs> yes. And yeah. maybe those things may have been a little bit uh, stretched out in Winnipeg. Yes. Because there's nothing going on in the hockey anyway. So what are we going to make make one guy does one thing? You know what? But I will say that billboard that he did, he had a billboard with money on it. He's trying to get his girlfriend back. So that was pretty I don't dumb. remember that one. I remember that one. That was funny. <laughs> uh, but no, I, he was a good fit. So I hope that... No, 29 goals, almost a 30-goal season. That would have been his first 30-goal season in a while. So, uh, who'd you have for the next one? This is, this is 20, right? We're at 20? Yeah. Um, Ryan Nugent Hopkins only had 48 points last year. He was year. injured, though. He was injured. 60 games, right? Yeah, 62. 62. Um, he was fantastic on um, what I've come to know. So, a uh, little insight. One of my friends, uh, uh, SPR on Twitter... He has, he's had me on his podcast a couple times. Um, we like, he likes to, he's a big Oilers guy. So yep. he's turned me on to watching a lot of Oilers games. Nugent Hopkins and McDavid are fantastic. It's like butter and bread. Those guys are so fun to watch. Obviously, Dry yeah. Seidel too. But uh, you're right, he was a left wing. For a majority of his career, he's been a center. So, and then he became a left wing, obviously, when Dry Seidel and uh, McDavid became the top two. And he's been a really good fit when he's not injured. So this would have been his career high if he would have played the full, full season. No doubt about it, because his career high is like, what, 54 points, 52 points around that range? Yeah. So he hasn't reached that number one uh, draft potential spot, but at the same time, it's like, hey, you're playing with McDavid and you're a good fit on the wing. There's a great opportunity there for him. Exactly. So yeah. good for Nuge. Good for Nuge. Making your top 20. Yeah. <laughs> Nuge, moving up in life. <laughs> All right. What do you got for number nine? We're cracking the top 20 now. We're at 18. 18. Oh, okay. 18. Uh, newly acquired by the Florida Panthers, Mike Hoffman, who's had some issues this offseason, to say the least. Yeah. But. How about that backstabbing trade that the, the Sharks did? Oh, turned around oh, and traded boy. him right oh, to Florida. Melnick, Melnick's oh, yeah. like, all right, I don't want, I don't want to trade him to Florida because they're in division, so I'm gonna give him to San give Jose. To San Jose. And then, and, San o- then oh. Doug Wilson's like cackling in the back. <laughs> that was great. Do it. I'm going to trade him over there. Do it. Further adding to the complete dumpster fire that oh, the Senators have been. Hoffman's going to drop 40 goals. He's dropping 40 goals. He's going to play with Barkov or Trocek instead of playing with, like, I can't even tell you who, who's on auto. Duchesne maybe once. But Yeah, but, I mean, that that's my point, though. The fact that he put up the numbers he did. He had 56 points there, uh, 22 goals, 34 assists on a bad Ottawa team. Yeah, I mean, and it's he's not the only like, player that was good. It's not like Guy Boucher's system is an offensive system exactly. either. So, no doubt, no doubt. All right, who we got next? This one, uh, I had, I was really debating this because I never really, I guess, paid attention to his point per game totals. Okay. But David Perron had 66 points this year. Yeah. Playing in Vegas. You know, he only had 16 goals, but 50 assists. I don't really ever remember him being that effective of a player. All right, we'll save that one, too, for later. Because that's something that I do want to mention about about him. It's He's a weird guy. <laughs> yeah. Weird guy. All right. So now we're at 15, right? 15 now? Uh, 16. 16. All right, who you got for 16? Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk. <laughs> that guy. I hate that guy. That guy is an annoying I hated his annoying father. player. Oh. I like his father. He played on Blues, right? Played for yeah. the Blues. Yeah. Good player. I mean, he probably didn't like him. All right, so I had some. Uh, I had some guys too. I had Vanek at 19. I had. Uh, oh, that's another one I, I yeah. left off. I had Vanek at 19. I had uh, 18. I had Tara Vinen. Um, 17. I had Zucker, and then 16. I had uh, Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor. 30 goal scorer. Kyle Connor. Huh? All right, so now we're finally in our top 15. Now, that was all of our honorable mentions, not honorable mentions, dishonorable mentions. Um, and now we're finally here. We're at the top top of the lineup. I will go first. At number 15, I had the Winnipeg Jets, uh, Danish man, Nikolai Ellers. 29 goals, 31 assists, 60 points, which is a four-point decrease. Um, I will say you had him. You didn't have him in your top fifteen, right? He was uh, he was all. Yeah. I can't. How? I don't and know. And you didn't even Kyle Connor either. All right. <laughs> Nikolai know. Ellers is on that on that offensive team that that Winnipeg has. So Winnipeg has Blake Wheeler, Patrick Laine, Shifley, 
Brian Little. Yep. Those are just four guys off the top of my head. And then you add two other sixty point goal two other sixty point scores in uh in uh Ellers and Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor scored thirty goals, Ellers scored twenty nine but had thirty one assists. They both had the same amount of points. Uh I could really point them exchangeable just because they both had pretty much the same output. I only put Ellers above in number 15 list just because he last season he had 64 points, this season 60. Now uh, it's just two seasons in a row, 120 points, which is really good, really good. I mean, he did this season, he did play a full 82 games, so uh, he has a huge, huge ceiling for the, what, what he provides. I mean, he, has, uh, he just signed a huge contract this last year. He has like seven more years left. Not nothing that's too terrible. He's a young player, and he can only get better, you know. So I, I yep. honestly, it's a good player. He, he's definitely gonna be higher in this list if we do this next year. So yeah, he can only go up. Probably there's gonna probably gonna be like ten Winnipeg players because all Winnipeg wingers seem to just have magical seasons now. Oh, Winnipeg's a great team. All right, who'd you have for your 15? All right, number 15. I believe he's the second leading goal scorer listed. Anders Lee, the Islanders. Okay, okay. I had I had him I had him a little bit further, so we'll talk about him when I'm when further. All right. So number fourteen, <laughs> the guy that we were talking about earlier, I had David Perron. So David Perron, sixteen goals, fifty assists, sixty six points, and seventy games played. Now you know David Perron from St. Louis. Yeah. He played on Edmonton. Uh, probably played somewhere else. Ducks, I think. I, I think he, yeah. That Maybe think about he right. played on Ducks. Probably wrong. Someone's gonna correct me in the comments. Um, but this guy, I just did. There's no way. <laughs> like, I when I looked at the stat, I was like, 66 points? Are you kidding me, David Perron? David Perron gets 50 points a season. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe 55. But it was just an absurd season for everyone on Vegas last yeah, year. That's, I mean, he played 70 games. That he almost scored a, a point per game rating. Yeah. That's that's a that's an amazing clip for any player, but especially David Perron. I, that was just. And he, he does it in a contract year. He's back in St. Louis now. How much money? He only signed three point seven million though, for a sixty a sixty seven point or sixty six point season. Like he didn't really make bank on it. That's for sure. He didn't make anything off of that that season. Everyone knew what he's worth. Yeah, that's and, for sure. And he's older too, so oh, he's like thirty. I think now, man. I feel like David Perron's been around forever. I know, right? No, he has some sweet hands. He has some sweet mitts. I will say that the mitts on that guy are uh, close to none. I, I I I was a big Oilers fan back in the day, so when they traded for him a couple years ago, I was really excited because I was just like, oh, yes, David Perron. Yeah. And then he ended up doing nothing and then getting waived or traded, something along <laughs> those lines. And now he's back in St. Louis, which is kind of ironic because when they, when they traded them, he had kind of like a – he was kind of like, no, I didn't want to leave here. He was kind of mad at Doug Armstrong for trading him. So the, now that he's back in – St. Louis, it's like, all right, well, I guess all the bridges are mended. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was number 14. What'd you have for uh, 14? Uh, I had Jason Zucker. Jason Zucker. What was his points? So Zucker had 33 goals, 31 assists for 64 points. Um, he had a 50% Corsi. Oof. So average. Oh, okay, okay. No, I do want to say, so... People were really mad when the were mad when the Alex Tuck left Minnesota. Yeah, and a lot of people don't even think about Jason Zucker on the Minnesota Wild. I mean, I honestly I didn't even think anybody besides Eric Stahl and maybe Nino Niederreiter had yeah. had over sixty points. I think Nino Niederreiter only had fifty five points this season. So uh, Zucker has really come up in that lineup. I think of him and Coyle are two very underrated players. Yeah, I was just about to say that because I can remember some playoff series where they did some damage against the Hawks, and uh, you know they're they've been very effective. But like you said, they've flown under the radar. They're not the big names that yeah. you know you think about with the Wild. You know, when you talk about the Wild, everyone brings up. I think you of know. Koivu, I think of Koivu, Parise, and Suter. Yep. Dubnik. And Devin Dubnik, yep. Yeah. Those are the only guys I really think of when I think of, of, of that team. And, I mean, you ne- I always think of those guys as depth players, but 64 points is, is very good. And then, like, I'm looking at my list. I, I only reason I didn't really – I had him in number 17, so he was close to my rankings. But, I don't know, maybe it's just because I don't watch a lot of Minnesota Wild yeah. games. I don't see how effective he is. If, but at the same time, you never hear he doesn't do it. He's just one of those players that's, that is he's good. He's just solid. He's, he's a good, He's a good player. I don't know what his what his point were uh, 
was last time. I'll have to look that up, but um, we will get back to you on that. But um, but definitely good good player all in all now. So yeah. we're at number thirteen. Uh, one of my favorite players all time, Gabriel Landeskog, twenty five goals, thirty seven assists, sixty two points. Sydney game again. Give a give a round of applause <laughs> to Mr. Landeskog for coming back. Hello, how you doing? It's Landeskog. It's Landeskog hour. It's happy hour somewhere because he's always happy. Yeah. Uh, I was really happy to see he had a big bounce back season. Um, he always, what's crazy? So, well, one first thing I when I think of hockey. So, when I was a kid, it was I think he was drafted in 2010, maybe 2011. Um, when I first started watching hockey, it was like. Really, really wide. I've watched hockey when I was a kid, obviously, but like when you, really, when really, you really watching, started paying attention and yeah, remembering things. Was was yeah. really when Landon Scott's first rookie season, and I think that might have been 2010, maybe 2011. I don't remember around those times. Uh, but I remember him scoring. Man, I feel old now. Yeah, yeah. He. I remember him scoring a goal. And his entire team just jumped off the bench. It was like his first career goal. Yeah. And I just remember him like getting his face plastered on the <laughs> on the on the um on the glass because everyone was hugging him so hard, and he was like, "I can't. I need to get off." <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't breathe. Uh, anyway, that's just a little side note. But um, definitely, Landis Cog, uh Last couple of seasons, he's been uh, on the downtrend. His people have been questioning his uh, uh, ability to lead a team. And really, you know, he's was one of the youngest captains in the yeah. in the league when he got promoted to it. Um, and especially, he was the second captain after Joe Sackick left. So that's big, uh, big shoes to fill, right, right there. Just talking about Joe Sackick. And yeah, no kidding. And I mean, they've only made the playoffs once, or now twice since uh, since he's uh, been drafted. So obviously, big, big shoes to fill. And I mean. This season, having uh, 62 points, he's he's one of the last remaining power forwards in the NHL. He plays a big he plays a big game, and I mean, you scored you wait scored 25 goals. It's not a bad not a bad amount. Um, do you have his Corsi rating? Uh, Corsi rating, he was 49.5, so yeah, a little bit a little bit below average, but you know. So you think? Do you think this is a career career for him? Not career year, but you think this is this is it? You think this is he's gonna be him back on track? I don't think he's gonna go any higher. I don't think he can reach a 70-point clip and maybe have a consistent. I think he's going to end up maybe in the 55, 55 to 60-point rating for the rest of his career. I mean, he has a really good contract for the yeah. next like four more. I think it's like 5.7, maybe, maybe a little more, maybe six million. Yeah. Which I means not bad, but I don't think he's anywhere close to something that's going to be any higher than 60 points. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I also had him at 13. Did you? Oh. So, oh. yeah, but uh, you know, maybe he. Patrick Waugh's system wasn't the best fit for him. Maybe it wasn't a, good for anybody. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They had one good season, and then the his rest first, of the season his first, was like... His first season, right? It was, yeah. It was, no, it was second season. Second, second season. season? Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. That, that team played zero defense and had zero, zero puck control on the wall. Yeah. It was like, hey, let's just throw it up the middle. And I mean, it worked because you had Riley, uh, Duchesne, and rookie McKinnon. But then it just left the wings out to dry a lot of times. It really made their game harder to play because yeah. they were playing out of position. Anyway, that's a, that's a story for a different day. I will complain about uh, Patrick Waugh's system forever <laughs> and always say that he is a junior coach and should stay in junior. Sorry, Patrick Waugh. He seems to have that mentality. He is, he's, a, he's a weird guy. All yeah. right, uh, we're at number 12. Um, you had him at 20, 22. Uh, JVR, my boy, JVR. 36 goals. Come on. 36 goals. 18 Only assists. 18 assists, though. All right. The guy is not a passer. All right. So, okay. This is probably completely biased. You probably hate me for this. But I think anybody in the league and anybody who watches NHL will tell you that in front of the net, JVR is the, is the number one player in front of the net. This guy collects every – he's probably scored out of those 36 goals. 34 of them were within a four-foot four yeah. radius of the – of the goalie, now he's. I remember him. I remember him shooting the puck once, <laughs> like this entire. And I've watched every single Leafs game this year. He probably shot the puck like <laughs> once. Like I only remember one shot from like 20 feet out. That was the only time he shot the puck. This guy is fantastic in front of the net. Deflections, just wrapping it in. Power moves to the. Net. He's just a really good in front of the net player, and he's. You score 36 goals. You know what? Anybody can sit in front of the net and be a power play specialist, but this guy is the power play specialist. He had a 55.6% Corsi, too. He's good. So. He only, but he only think of it, too. He scored 36 goals with averaging only 12 minutes of ice time. 
Like, that's who good. else? That's why he only had 18 assists, but he didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't playing. I mean, at the same time, I mean, he's not a player you want on the ice a lot anyway. But he literally, when he played, he made it count. Yeah. I will say that. 30, you don't just, nobody, you can't, nobody gets, just gets 36 goal seasons. Like, you just, you just don't get 36 goal seasons being nothing. And I mean, he was, he, he was what? I think he was eighth in the league in goal scoring this year. So, I mean, hey, <laughs> JVR is yeah, actually. Okay. I, you know, I guess if I'm complaining about him not having enough assists, then I can go back and look at Anders Lee, who had 40 goals and only 22 assists last well, year. Well, you know, 20 is not, like, it's not the same. And I mean, you you grew up in the dead puck era, so, I mean, there's not a lot of points going around anyway. Yeah. And I mean, like, we're talking about certain players on on certain teams. And I'm just like, I only know all these things about JVR because I've, I, I'm a Leafs fan and yeah. I watch even though I have a Coyotes jersey, I don't know, random. random yeah, why not? <laughs> but, hey, um, hey, that's why the intro was hollering for you. Oh, there it is. Uh, J-O. Um, Coyotes goal song right there. Exactly. But I'm just saying, JVR, fantastic player. I, I, it's sad to see him go to Philly, but, hey, uh, he brings a lot, but, I mean, you get Tavares to make up for the close score. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Tavares yeah. has a lot of assists. <laughs> You'll take that one. We'll get into that when we talk about centers. All right, so who'd you have at 12? Uh, who did I have at 12? Who did you have at 12? There's numbers. Loads of numbers. Yeah, yeah, because I wrote someone here and then moved them up my list. Okay. And now I, I've got to figure out who I bumped down. I think, oh. I, I, think I bumped down. All right. Uh, it's coming. Jonathan Huberto. Jonathan Huber. Hoop a doop. Hoop a doop a doop. All right, Jonathan Huberto. Uh, I have him a little bit further in my list, so we will go right to number 11. And this was the guy you were talking about earlier, uh, Anders Lee. 40 goal season, 22 assists, 62 points, played a full 82. He is the guy. I think I got him and Josh Bailey confused when we did our right wingers. Yeah. So I take that back. Uh, Andrews Lee is the guy who's gonna back. Who's gonna be the one who's gonna fall back? Cause I mean that came out of nowhere. 40 goals. 40 goals. You, yeah. yeah. I know. And he played. He played on Tavares' wing the entire time. And he played with Barzell. You play with either one of those guys, you're gonna score. Oh yeah! If you went from the first line, when the second line with Barzell, it's like, hey, uh, you're gonna score some goals. Now he only has, um, only has Barzell in that line, so it's kind of, I don't know. What do you think he's gonna get next season? You think he's only gonna get like 40 points? <sighs> that's that's a steep drop off, but yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, look I, up his thing. I would say he he'll pro- his goals will probably be cut almost in half. I think he's only a 20 goal scorer. I mean, what was he before this season? All right, so his career, uh, he started in 2012, 2013, played two games, two points. The next year, 22 games, 14 points. Uh, 2014, 15, 41 points. 2015, 16, 36. 2016, 17, 52. He had 34 goals last season. Okay. And then uh, this okay. season, 40. All right. Well, he had the pretty much same stats as JVR. He had 34 goals, 18 assists, 52 points last season, or two seasons ago. And now this last season, he had... 40 goals, 22 assists. So, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. He looks like he's a goal scorer. Uh, Maybe he'll average out like 28 to 34. Okay. Maybe that's what he'll get. I mean, how old is he now? He's. Maybe it has to deal with, too, the fact that he plays on the Islanders. Played with Tavares the majority of his career. So, I mean, that's a. Yeah, but everyone only talked about Tavares. He was a negative 25 this season, by the way. By the by. Negative 25. Of course he wasn't good either. 48%. Oh, all right. Well, there's that guy. All right. So, Anders Lee, 11, 11th overall. Who'd you have for 11th? Card Raquel. All right. For the Ducks. Well, when, I'm, when I'm doing this, this list and looking over the rosters, they had him lift, listed as a left wing. Okay. No problem. Who had any points to the F? So, he had 69 points, 34 goals, 35 assists, a 50.1% Corsi. So, league average in that department. But... He's been a he's been a guy that the Ducks have needed. You know, some of the you know Corey Perry, Ryan Kessler, these guys are getting older. So Raquel has been a nice shot in the arm, uh, production-wise for the Ducks. You know, like I said, something that they've needed. Right, and kind of keep them afloat. You know, you gotta keep those Ducks afloat. Uh, yeah, I mean, over his career, he's had 313 games played, has 198 points. Uh, this last season, he had 69 points, 34 goals, 35 assists. Season before for that, the 2016-2017 season, he had 33. He had the JVR points, 33 goals, 18 assists, 
So if we did this list last year, you would have been like, I don't know, man. He's definitely drop him all the way down. He's definitely a 22 overall. In my rate, in my book, <laughs> in my book. Let me tell you. <laughs> so he's a 34 goal guy, 30 goal point scorer. Not bad, not bad season. I mean, like I said, he did play a lot of center. So when he played center because Ryan Getzlaff was out and also yeah, yeah. Ryan Kessler was yeah. uh, was out as yeah. well. So now he is going to be playing full-time center as a second line yeah. uh, center. Probably, let's just say if Sam Steele comes in, he starts playing the center position that he played in junior. Raquel will probably go back to his, uh, his winger spot or vice versa, either way. But definitely... Um, a good player, I would say. I probably, if he, if I had him on my list, I probably have him up at least. You know what? Maybe nine. I have him at nine. He's he's a good player. I like, you ever watch? If you if you ever watch any of his games, like he has such a weird style he plays. He literally plays like he plays like a Swede, but he plays such like a Finnish game. Yeah. Like he's one of those guys where like. He, so when Sweden, when Swedish players play, it's like, I, I was gonna say, explain this to me. So I, at least what I've seen, when Swedish players play, they do a lot of two-way game, but it's a lot of passing. So it'll be you pass back to your point man, and you right. wait for him to set you up, and you wait, you wait on the boards. But way a Finnish player plays, it's really like duck and dive kind of game where you'll you go you're going in fast, and you go you have to do a lot of skill play where you deep yeah. around a lot, and it's a lot of more hand play, and then pass it off. But okay. he did. He did. He mixed it up where it's like he'll go in and do those dicks, but he'll be dishing as he's doing it. Which yeah. is, I mean, I mean, it's just the way I describe. It's probably an average way a lot of good players do it. But he's definitely one of those guys that takes those two styles and kind of merges it together. Which is something that I see. I, I do like the way he plays. He's a really interesting player to watch if you like watching for how his two-way game is and how he gets the puck around. And it's just it's really interesting to watch what he does because he's very creative with the puck. Yeah. And that's what makes him such a an interesting player to watch because he scores these elusive goals. He scores some highlight reel goals, but he'll score some goals where it's like you think he's passing, and even I can't find myself thinking he's gonna get do the obvious pass. That's there. I'll be say it's like a three on like two. You think he's gonna pass it back to behind him? He'll like put it behind his back, act like he's gonna do it, and then just pull it back with a kick, and then I'll be in the net. And you're like, how'd you do that in one move? It makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's an elusive player. Def- definitely, uh, definitely a good choice there. If I if I would have had him on my left wings, he would have been up there. Um, all right. Are we cracking the top ten now? We're cracking the top ten. The top ten. <laughs> we're we're. <laughs> all right, number ten. Uh, Victor Arvinson, twenty nine goals, thirty two assists, sixty one points, seventy eight games played. I'm gonna tell you. Let me tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. Victor Arvidsson, best contract in the league, hands down. Four million dollars, a yeah. sixty-point player, plays on the top line, plays penalty kill, plays power play. Yeah, you'll take. He, that. he probably plays center. He probably, he probably plays <laughs> defense. Doesn't even matter. He, if he if Rene went down, Victor Arvidsson would be like, I'm hey, giving a goal. Just stick him in the pads. Yeah, <laughs> give him the pads. I'm gonna put him on. <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so good. Uh, he's such. He's like. He's like a better uh, Gallagher. Okay. Without being uh, mad all the time, yeah, not being such an aggressive Gallagher. He's, he's like, when I say that, it's probably a horrible comparison, but uh, he's just a small player who's like very good two way, very goes into the corners, fights in the corners, digs out the puck a lot, can do your cycle play, can do your big two way game when he's in the middle of the ice. Is great. I love him watching them through the neutral. I watch hockey too much. <laughs> um, I love watching him. Going through the neutral zone. So it's so funny. I remember him. He was playing with Johansson, I think, Forsberg in the playoffs. And I just remember him. So usually when if the, if you play, you're probably doing like a single lane run, like rush, which is what the, the Predators do because they start off from the back end a lot of times. Yeah. And they'll just do that big uh, the big cross, cross ice pass. Um, and a lot of times it'll be one of those plays where it's like a trick play where you'll have two guys – Entering the zone through the left, and then the right wing lane will be a right uh, right lane swing. Yep. So a lot of times he'll do it, but it, he just he's such a good skater that when he's doing it, he'll just like slide and do such an uh, angelic swing that he just gets past the defender, and he's in a lot of times on these two on ones because he just gets past that defender. Doesn't even have the puck, but he's just getting past these guys, and he's just such a quick, fast thinking player yeah. that he can do that. And even when he's with the puck, he makes these he makes very quick plays for uh, for a player that is I mean obviously you gotta be quick when you're smaller, but he just makes these plays that are just very 
big. Nope. <laughs> that makes sense. He makes himself bigger than what he's seen. He's not. A, he's, he's a flash player, but he is a great two-way guy. I think uh, he's like he's like a better. Uh, I guess like comparatively speaking, on that team, he's probably better Smith. Like, Smith is a fantastic, um, I forget his first name, but he's Craig, a, Craig Smith. Yeah, he's yeah. a fantastic two-way player, probably gets you 54 points, plays center and right wing. But, like, Craig Smith is not, like, a finesse player, but has a very, very well-rounded two-way game. And I think Victor Arvinson has come out of nowhere and really provided that two-way yeah. uh, game that you need in your top six. He's kind of like a Hosa. Yeah. Without being Hosa. Yeah. Hosa was a bigger guy. Yeah, I mean, Hosa, Hosa had some... Had some had some horses. Yeah. He had some horses. All they right. called them Hoss. <laughs> yes, they did. All right, so who'd you have for number 10? Uh, number 10. Uh, another another Golden Knight. No. Jonathan Marchessault. Oh, he was a left wing. Yep. Oh, no, he was a right wing. I, I don't even know where I am. Oh, nuts. I totally forgot about Marchessault. All right, I'm going with him as 10-point B. Uh, so, huh. so 77 games, he had 27 goals, 45 assists. For 75 points, a 53.8 percent Corsi. It's good. Yeah, it's just <laughs> kind of good, eh? <laughs> but you know, he, he was good before. He's good on Florida. Yeah. He, he had he had 30 goals a season prior, and what he had 54 points around that around that. He Roughly, had, yeah. I mean, JVR season. <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna live there. You're that not. Down. <laughs> How did you have a 36 goal I, I, score? I don't know. All the way down. Oh, he's not that good. He only had 18 assists. Maybe it's um. Oh boy. Maybe it, maybe I was scared off by the uh, <laughs> the remembrance of his brother. Oh boy, TBR boy, TBR. Um, good old TBR. All right, but we're not but, talking about those guys. What are you talking? But yeah, about? no, March. So I, I I was really really shocked when Florida. They didn't protect him, right? He got drafted by Vegas. They traded him to him. They traded him because to Vegas. they didn't. They didn't want them to take. Oh shoot! I don't know the other guy's name. They traded Smith and Marcia so to them because they wanted to protect someone else. I can't remember off the top of my head. Someone else, but I was shocked they, because he was productive for Florida. Well, he was the extra piece to trade them, Smith, because Smith was only getting you forty-five points and you had a five million dollar contract. So yeah, they were so like, they had this. Throw in a sweetener. Yeah, and then yeah. Smith ended up being fantastic, and Marshall so being yeah. fantastic. 70 point. That's crazy. 75 point. You know what? It's kind of funny. So, again, I will compare this always to NHL games. <laughs> um, back in, like, 2013, 2014, again, they had star ratings instead of, like, elite top six, top that your player would evolve into. And if your guy had, like, a green three and a half stars your guy would just become this amazing player but if he had a four star rating god forbid he will not be in the nhl ever so marcia so was a guy who had a three and a half rating and i'd always pick him up in free agency because nobody wanted him i pick him up he'd become my star player he'd get 75 points and i would tell everybody didn't know how to say his name but this guy this guy immerses me yeah i'd be like marcia buffalo this guy i'm fantastic everyone's like oh he's never gonna make it i'm like all right whatever and I know I proved them wrong. We proved them wrong. <laughs> Me and Marcia so together. Proving everybody wrong. Now we are. You see where we're at now in life. No, he's a good player. Yeah, no, no duh. 75 points, you just you just don't get that from being okay. Alright, um, we are now number nine. Right? Number nine. Um I had Hoop Doop. I had Hoop Doop, Hoop Hoopadro. Okay. Herba Derp. Um twenty-seven goals. 42 assists for 69 points, which is hilarious. Uh, he had 82 games played. Uh, I'd like to call him the Robin to uh, to Barkov's Batman, uh, which is Barkov Batman. Yes. Um, Barkov Batman. I don't think Huberdeau knows a lick of English. Um, Huberdeau is, uh, again, back to NHL, <laughs> NHL games. So he's drafted third overall. There used to be this game called GM Connected. And in GM Connected, you could play with all your friends. You could trade for players. I would always trade for Huberdo. GM Connected? I don't, I've never heard of that. It was awesome. You could play full season with all your friends. It's like a franchise mode. Yeah. But with all your friends, you could trade players, the computers, computer, go against them, have a schedule every week where you win against whatever. Anyway, um, I would always trade for Huberdo. And even though you only score like maybe eight or nine goals, but he would have like 70 assists. Like, he would just be a monster. It's like, this guy didn't even shoot the puck. I think he only got assists by, like, our goals by, like, empty nets. Like, it was just <laughs> it was just nuts. He had maybe, like, 56 goals, 56 shots. It's crazy. He did not shoot once. He just yeah. passed it. It was nuts. Anyway, uh, very good player. Um, he's really made his own. He's been injured the last couple seasons, so seeing him play a full 82-game yeah. uh, uh, season. That's huge for Florida. 
it, they're going to be they're stacked next year. See, but haven't you been saying that for a couple of years now? No, no I, mean, I knew they were going to be trash. <laughs> I don't know. Florida's Florida's had some guys. They've had a lot of top draft picks. It just seems like they haven't put it all together yet. I think this is it. This is the I year, so. though. I think it is. I just their defense. Matheson's coming through. Ekblad's had a full good season. Uh, Petrovic, I know they want to get rid of him, but he's a really good top six, in my opinion. Luongo had a, had a good save percentage last year. Reimer was decent at times. And then you have, uh, you just get Hoffman, who can really help Trocek on the second line. That's Trocek, true. Hoffman, Dadnoff can go between playing with Barkov and Huberto. And then their their bottom six is a lot of good two-way players. Can't name you any of them, <laughs> but I know they're good two-way players because I've watched Florida, and I hated watching Florida games because they were, they're so good to play. They're so good to watch. Not that I, I hated watching them because they beat the Leafs, and they would always beat other Atlantic teams, and I was scared that they were going to come and knock the Leafs out of the playoffs. It's a long shot, but still. Yeah. It's one of those moments where you're like, I want you to get in there, but I don't. <laughs> so, but definitely uh, – Definitely, they do have a good court. I think this is the year they put it all together. Butchstad, Butchstad, that's the guy. You think they'll start start drawing better? Drawing? Fans? Oh, I don't know, man. That's, I guess I should have phrased that better. but I was like, I'm like, do they not draw well? No. <laughs> I was like, no, I mean, no is there one, a competition? No one, no, one goes, no one goes to their games. <laughs> I was like, out of all the NHL teams, they draw way bad. <laughs> They're horrible. No artistic skills there. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess they are the worst at drawing, too. Yeah, no, they're... I don't know. It's They didn't really draw when they had playoffs. They were still kind of... You know what? They did sell out when they made the playoffs. Yeah. Which is something Audible can't say. Um, Ayo. Ayo. <laughs> not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for all, it's just something that... I I think that they won't. Just it's, it's not popular in that area. You have the drive to... I'm not sure if you've ever been to Florida down there. But I have a lot of friends who are like in that area. Okay. Like that stadium is like secluded. It's kind of it? like Carolina. I'm not sure if you've ever been to the Carolina Stadium. I haven't, but I've heard bad it's, things. It's like in a it's like in a weird like forest area. Obviously, there's no forest down there, but it's like it, you have to go there. There's no real public transportation compared to speaking to like Amelie Arena, where the yeah. where the Lightning play. There, you can get there through anything, but it's like in a weird area. You just can't get it. There. I'm not saying that's the full thing. Cause, I mean. They are selling. I remember there was a sale for tickets. You pay ten bucks, you get uh, like ten refills. You get like a hot dog, a hamburger, cheese, whatever, and a T-shirt for ten bucks. In Florida? In Florida. Huh. Like I would go to every game if I was in. Yeah. Pan, if I was a Panther. Right. I'd go to every game, but there's no one showing up. They don't really have any. They don't have Starp. They have Luongo, but he's towards the end of his career, and they also don't have like a lot of star power. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Enough about Florida. <laughs> All right, who we got? We're at number eight. Um, I had uh, Philip Forsberg of the Wash. I mean, uh, uh, Nashville Predators. <laughs> um, he had 26 goals, 38 assists, 64 points in only 67 games. Yeah, he's a heck of a player. In goal. That guy would have had another 30 goal season if he wasn't injured. Uh, I mean, Nashville talk about a, a loaded team. But... Loaded. No, it's so weird, but they don't have any lot. Of, they don't have a lot of top point scorers. Yeah. It's so weird. They didn't have anybody over 60 points this year. Or 67 points. That's balance. I know, but everyone... It's not really... It's just... They have a lot of JVRs. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of JVRs. Horrible team. Tons of JVRs. <laughs> Who'd you have at um, in the eight? At number, at number eight, I had... Oh, see, here's where I... I oh, God, here we go. <laughs> no, because here, here we go. Here's where here I was comes switching the people around. Here comes the numbers. That's why we do it on technology, where you can just delete things. I know, but I have this giant notebook that oh. wasn't being used for anything. All right, so. who you got for number eight? Who's number eight? Jaden oh. Schwartz. Jaden Schwartz. <laughs> okay. Jaden Sh maybe? <laughs> All right, I have him at number seven, so we'll talk about him right now. So number seven, I had him at Jaden yeah, Schwartz at number seven. Um, 24 goals, 35 assists, 59 points, 62 games played. What was his Corsi right? His Corsi was 57.1. He was fantastic. He was a, yeah. he's again. Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis has got a squad. They it's so weird. We say that, but they didn't they didn't make the playoffs last season. But it was only by one point. Yeah. And it was because some players were injured. Jane Schwartz had a fantastic start to the season with with Shannon Tarasenko. And then Schwartz got injured, and then just, there just wasn't a lot of consistency between the lineup in St. Louis. They changed that. 
They yeah. made sure, hey, if one player gets out, we're not relying on one guy, which is kind of ironic to think. You know, you, when you think of St. Louis, you think it's Tarasenko's team. Yeah. But I think I think Schwartz is the guy who's who's kind of running it, like running the background there. Yeah. Like to be honest with you, he's had a lot of he's had a lot of uh, a couple good seasons here for the last couple of years. So I definitely think that he's one of those guys that is behind the scenes. Like you always need another. You always need a uh, like a hosa to your to your team. Yeah. No, I mean, like, oh, absolutely. No one's gonna tell you like, Host is a bad player. No, but he's definitely not the first player. He on, doesn't on, get all the attention. Yeah, he's like one of the one of those players again. He's not the flashiest, but yeah, I mean, look at this. So over his career, he's he had he's been playing since 2011, 2012. He played seven games, three goals. Next year at 45, 45 uh, games played, 13 points, and he finally broke op- broke open. And he had 56 points, and then he had 63 points. He was injured in 2015. 16 with 22, he only had 22 points, but in 33 games. And then uh, last year, or two years ago, he had 55 points, and then this year, 59 points. So he's definitely been a very good player for St. Louis. And, again, I think him and, uh, him and uh, Tarasenko are... Tarasenko? Oh, I, I gotta say, that. I think this, this, this team is very adept to play. I mean, who do they got up front? We got uh, Schwartz... Shen, Tarasenko, O'Reilly, Bozak's there now. Yep. Fantastic group of players. Anyway, uh, who do you got for number seven? Uh, number seven. Number seven. Any um, day now. <laughs> We're waiting. See, I, I just, We're I waiting. really confused myself We're with this waiting. list. I think we, <laughs> I think we skipped over a number. All right. Well, no, we did it. Number seven. Who we got for number uh, seven? Number seven. I had uh, Johnny Hockey. Johnny Johnny Goudreau. Yeah, at seven. Oh my gosh. Just kidding, I am I am six. Right. I, I also I also had Artemi Panarin at eight on this list. Oh yeah, we didn't even mention them. So I don't know You what... skipped someone because yeah. you're you're all over the place. Alright, well, I had Panarin up at the list. So alright, so number I had I had uh, Goudreau at number six, so we'll go right off of there. Goudreau, twenty four goals, sixty assists, eighty four points. Johnny Hockey. What was his Corsi rating? Corsi fifty four point five percent. He's uh he's a monster too. Uh, small, small, very wicked monster. He is, you know what? Between him and Perron uh, for best hands, uh, I just want to say Goudreau has some nasty. I always remember him. I remember yeah. him best at the All Star game when when Brent Burns held him like a little child, <laughs> let him with the little pee wee stick and had him score a goal. That was hilarious, hilarious. He's five foot nine. Everyone makes it seem like he's like a small, like tiny man. Yeah. I, I you know, I definitely will argue that. Um, that I think Patrick Kane's like at least five foot two. <laughs> He's so short. All right. Anyway, um, Goudreau. Yep, eighty four points. This is a career high, by the way. Uh, last year he had sixty one points. This year eighty four. So very big uh, increase. Twenty three point increase. So much needed for Calgary. Oh yes. All right. So number four at the top. You're number six. What's your number six? Jamie Ben. Jamie Ben. All right. I am him a little bit. I am a number five. So. Uh, Jamie Benn, 36 goals, 43 assists, 79 points, 10-point increase from last season. The thing that I I like most about Jamie Benn is he's he's the captain. I think he's a great leader. He he plays a very physical game, but he can also score. He does the dirty things. He'll drop the gloves occasionally, stick up for his teammates. You just got to love a player like that. He's a good – yeah, no doubt. He's definitely a, one of those guys that – um, when he won the scoring title a couple years ago, uh, everyone kind of finally started noticing yeah. who Jamie Ben is, and I think he gets a weird rep to where it's like you expect more, but you have to watch him to really see what he provides on the ice because he's playing that two-way game. He's playing. Yep. He plays like three guys at once. Mm-hmm. When he he adds another body, like he he's just an absolute animal. He's out a there. he's a man. Yeah. He's a man. He's like he's like Blake Wheeler. Yeah. Like last time we talked about, like how do you get the puck away from this guy? This snarly just, six foot four yeah. like monster man who has hair of an angel. <laughs> like he, he he's a man rocket. He is a man absolute. Nice. He's an absolute man rocket. Like I'm surprised that he just doesn't. Like, he'll like give someone the magnum stare and they'll just <laughs> they'll just drop. Like, this guy's an absolute rock. I just want to tell you right now. Look him up. I look up that hair. I don't know how he takes off his helmet. His hair stays the same. It's <laughs> it's crazy. So that guy has a gel sponsorship somewhere out there. Someone's like he just does it on the ice. Like <sighs> anyway. Um. Enough about me talking about Jamie Ben's hair. 
<laughs> I, I hate having to go against them, you know, uh, what? Playing at least six times, times in season. Central? Yeah, six yeah. times at least. So I hate it, but, you know, at the same time, I just love watching him play. I love that style of hockey. Yeah, he's, it's not, a, again, he's one of those last power forwards, that, mm-hmm. but he's, what, he's, he's effective on all sides of the ice. So not only his two-way game, but, you know, his power game as well. All right, so we're at number five. Who was your number fifth, fifth overall pick? Forsberg. So we talked about. We talked about Forsberg. Yeah, Forsberg at five. Woo! All right, so number four. Since you skipped over him because you don't know how to count, um, <laughs> for four. Artemi. Artemi Panarin. Um, my boy Anderson's army out there on Twitter. Uh, I finally got your boy. I remembered your boy. And every list that I've made, I always forget about Artemi Panarin. I forget him on everything. Yeah. Like there was a there was like top Russian players and I forgot Panarin. <laughs> like I just I should I put Kovalchuk before Panarin. I just I just forget the bomb. So there you are. I'm calling on now. Um, Panarin, 27 goals, 55 assists, 82 games. He wants out of the Columbus though. He wants to go back to his hometown, Chicago. <laughs> I hope. You can only you know it's crazy. So he he goes undrafted. He's worked his way up in the systems. Uh, he played in the KHL, fantastic KHL player. He wanted to go to Chicago. Yeah. And as an unrestricted free agent, signs in Chicago, plays yep. a fantastic season. He had 77 points first season. Fantastic with Patrick Kane. Um, next season, he had 74 points. That was with Columbus. No, that was with, he played two seasons in Chicago, Two right? seasons with the Hawks. Yeah, so then, then he gets traded. He, he didn't want to tr- get traded to Columbus. Like, if he wants to play for a team, he should go, he can... He's a. He didn't want to play. That's why he didn't want to sign. Yeah. Because he didn't. He doesn't want to play for a team they didn't want to play for. He came from Russia. He to he, play for a certain team, and he wants to play for the Hawks. It looks like. It, it, it's either the Hawks or definitely a team in a big market. I think he wants that spotlight. Yeah. That's, I don't, that's what I don't it even, seems like. I don't even think about him. That's me. I forgot him so many times since he's left the Hawks. Yeah, because he plays in Columbus. Yeah. Like, yeah, not I mean, saying Columbus is a bad market. No. And now I'm just now I just lost all the all the love for my friend. <laughs> I mean, look, Columbus. Columbus is a college football town. That's all it is. It's, yeah. it's Ohio State, and that's it. That's true. But here's the thing, though. Like, the Blue Jackets aren't that bad. They aren't. They're so one you, of the best. You would teams. think if if you were putting up that point production in Columbus, that hey, you know, maybe maybe there is something here. You know, maybe this team can go places, but he just doesn't want to be there. I don't blame him, though. So, in his three seasons, he's played in the NHL. He's played. He's at 77 points, 74 points in that career high this last season with Columbus. 82? 82 points. Uh, yeah, weird scenario they have. I don't I don't really – there's not really much else to say. I, 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 do you think he stays in Columbus or do you think he leaves? No. leaves? All right, that's, that's our verdict. There we go. No, I mean, if he wanted to stay, there's no way that that rumor comes out. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so who'd you have number four? Who's your number four? Pick? Brad Marchand. Brad Marchand. I have him at number three, so we'll just go right at that. 34 goals, 51 assists, 85 games played, 68 games uh, sixty-eight games played. Um, suspended, licked, of course. licked players. Yeah. Uh, I just want to tell you right now, if he's watching, if you're watching, Brad Marchand, I hate you. Um, As do I. I absolutely, that guy is a... Uh, it's not a good guy. Um, no, but you know the numbers speak player. for themselves. He is a what is the course you're at? It's oh my god. Is it sixty? It well, no, but fifty-six point four. Oh, why is he so good? <laughs> He's so but good. He's so I, annoying. I looked it up too that he was getting all. Um, I think at almost sixty percent offensive zone starts. So well, where else? He's a winger, so that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's not like. Um, yeah, he's a top six winger. It's not he's like he's going to be yeah. starting in the defensive zone. So yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, that he's going to be doing anything. You know, what I mean, like he's a, he's, he's not there for the two way game. He's just yeah. there to score points, score goals, irritate the top players, and that's it. Yeah, and he does, he does the best job in the whole league of it. So. Yeah. I mean, he's making his money. He does. He has 85. If he would have taken over the uh, Alex Burroughs, Maxime oh, Lapierre uh, agitator yeah. role. Oh boy, and he's actually good. That's nuts. What are we coming to? <laughs> next, next Gallagher is gonna score like 80 points, and oh. it's just gonna be, it's gonna be craziness. All right, so uh, enough gushing over Brad Marchand. Um, number three. Who'd you have for number three? 
See, this is where it got really tough for oh, me. Oh, did it? Okay. Because you had the league MVP in Taylor Hall. Okay. You had a guy who scored 102 points, and you have one of the best goal scorers of all time. Who scored 102 points? Oh, I forgot Drew, too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had him at the center. <laughs> so. Okay. No, it's funny. Uh, yeah. You had Claude Giroux. You talked before. I don't have Claude Giroux on my list, so I'll have him as a 3A. So definitely, what? Because he's 102 points. He took. He took. Uh, he was fourth in the for the Flyers for faceoffs, and he was 60 percent this season. Man. So he's still a fantastic center. Um, anyway, continue what you're saying. Yeah. It. Man, this was this was so shocking for me to do it, but I had Ovi at three. Ovi at three. You know what? That's. That's not bad. I had him at number one. So we'll just kind of mix all these three together. So uh, number three, you had Ovi. I had number three. I had Marshawn, as I said. Um, I didn't have Giroux, so that's something that uh, we should – what's Giroux? Who did you have? What, what was Giroux's stats? 82 games, 34 goals, 68 assists, 102 points, and a 53.2% Corsi. Such a good player. He's such a good two-way player. And that's he only had like 58 points the season prior, right? Yeah. So that's, that's crazy. It almost had 50 more points a season later. But he's been up and down. I mean, he's had some great seasons. He's been before, on the down. So. He's been on the downswing since he's had like a 78 point, maybe an 80 yeah. point season a couple years ago. He's been down the downswing. There's a lot of people thinking he was out of town this season if he only had 60 points around that line. So yeah, I know uh, he's a weird guy too. I don't know if he's he's definitely not going to get um, that amount of points again next season. So. Uh, that's a weird thing. So I had number two for my list. I had I had Taylor Hall. Taylor. I did it as, as well. All right, Taylor Hall, thirty nine goals, fifty four assists, ninety three points. Uh, he led in my for my list off of NHL Network. He led in the top left wing position when I re- redefined the results on Sportsnet and um, NHL.com. He led left wings in points. He was second in power play points. Um, he led his team. Uh, this was the second highest uh, point total in New Jersey Do- uh, New Jersey Devils history. 93 points. Can you name the number one guy? Number one. Yep. Patrick Elias? Yeah, Patrick Elias had 100 points. Yeah. 100 points. Um, yep, he had a four- there was a 41 point difference between him and Heshire, who had 53. <laughs> so this guy, and he had a 50. He had a. He had a 40 point increase last season too. So he had 53 points uh season last season now or two seasons ago. Now he had 90 uh 93. So very good player. Number one, we had the big O. Big O V. Uh 49 goals, 38 assists, 87 points. He led the league in goals with a con Smythe winner. 18 point increase, 16 goal increase. Um I don't, there's not really much to say. He speaks for himself. Big O. He's, yep. I, I, I couldn't have him not at number one because he had such a huge season. See, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, like he won the cup. Yeah. He won. He won the Conn Smythe. Won the Rocket Richard. Yeah. Like there's just no one else did. No one else. He had a 16 goal increase. Nobody else had a larger increase in goals from season to season. Yeah. Than him. And he's. I mean, obviously, the eight seven points is not nothing to scoff at either. But he's just been a fantastic player his whole career. Mm-hmm. And what, I could, what I could, are the greatest goal scorers ever? He is, I think he is the greatest goal scorer of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, he could be. So right. that's 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 what I have. Who do you have number one? I had Giroux. Giroux at number one. I could never have Giroux at number one. Those are two players I hate. Marshawn and Giroux. And Giroux. Two guys I cannot I cannot uh I cannot get. So two guys I don't I don't really like. Um we will be taking a five minute break. Uh we'll be back in a second, but those were our top 15 NHL top wingers uh, for this last season going into the next season. We had them all ranked. Um, for right now, we will be back in a little bit. I'm Nico. You can follow me on Twitter at Nico from the TO. You can follow our Twitter account at the Bag Skate. I don't know Matt's Twitter yet. Maliska52. Maliska52, because he is a 52. <laughs> 52 man hope you guys enjoyed this show we will be back with more content if you like this video please leave a like if you really liked it please subscribe and yeah hope you guys like the show thank you